We shall never cease to persevere against them until they have been taught a lesson which they and the world will never forget. Fifty years since the death of Winston Churchill, the job of leadership has become ever more difficult. Globalisation, technology disruption and the rise of social media are heaping pressures on today's leaders. Here in Cambridge, we talk to a group of current generation leaders and some from the next generation about the challenges that they face. The young leaders, all in their early 20s, are part of a leadership development programme at the Muller Centre in Cambridge, attached to Churchill College. Master of Churchill is eminent physicist and president of the British Science Association, Dame Athene Donald. I think leadership has changed and no doubt will continue to change. I don't think it's radically different from Churchill's time, but I think the speed at which things happen, the speed at which you have to be seen to act is much faster. Things like social media raise all kinds of issues. Um, and I think the, the respect that leaders receive as a right has also significantly diminished. People are much more critical, much more prepared to be critical and not just say, the leader knows best sort of thing. Dame Athene says leaders today have to persuade, not coerce, a view reflected by Fatima Islam, who's studying war and psychiatry at King's College in London and who already leads 200 army cadets in the university's officers training corps. I think the fundamentals of leadership have remained the same. Um, it's just sort of changing views and changing attitudes. You can see a lot more, sort of, uh, a lot more different sort of leadership styles almost um, come out. Uh, they're a lot more obvious now, I think, than they were in the past. Um, through like because of like, you know those different things. So like, I think you know the fact that like technology nowadays is so advanced. You know that means that people's views um, are rapidly changing or they're being challenged. But certain fundamental leadership qualities remain the same, as Tola James has found out setting up and running Nari Juice, which aims to bring West African palm juice to a wider audience with new flavours. I've learned from other people's leadership the ability to create a team through being yourself, the ability to research in depth, uh, the ability to continue when the going gets tough, the ability to negotiate getting everybody in harmony and in sync, getting everything else in harmony and in sync. Even more experienced leaders see change from a power-based top-down approach, like Robert Marshall, who heads the Marshall Group of industrial and property companies founded by his entrepreneurial great-grandfather. Leadership has changed from a sort of model of, of command and control, which still seems to be that model favoured in many movies that we see of leaders that know exactly what they're doing and exactly what, uh, who to tell what, uh, to one of objective setting and of making sure that teams have common aims. Uh, the last time I told somebody to do something was I can't even remember. The last time I tried to set an objective and get somebody really to understand that objective and spent whatever time it took to make sure that that was done was probably yesterday. Fatima Islam believes this move to a more nuanced style of leadership is even true of the British Army. I think the perception that people have of the Army being, you know, quite hierarchical and, um, you know, sort of, you know, you either do this or, you know, you're sort of out sort of thing. It may, it, you know, it, it, was, it was true, you know, some years ago and it may be the case now, but there's a lot of nurturing, there's a lot of mentoring and care that goes into it. You're never going to be successful just by yourself and you need to make sure that you work with those people who, you know, around you to help support them and, you know, for them to be able to help support you in your role. Toller James echoes this thought in his juice business. Leaders need to be collaborative and responsive. Everybody has the ability to listen to their heart and not think that because you're CEO or because you have this position, you should always lead and lead. You know, being a great leader, you need to know how to follow because regardless, you, you don't know everything and there's always going to be a hierarchy. And effective leadership is essentially knowing when to lead and when to follow and when to sit down and when to stand up. And in a less structured world, titles count far less for today's young leaders than influence over wider networks. While doing her medical studies, Emma Pension heads up communications for student network and health inequality charity Medicine UK. I don't think leadership is ever about one person and, and one position and the, the level of seniority that you hold within an organisation. I think, you know, it might sound a bit cliched, but it's, it's kind of a, a mindset that you have. And I think in any situation, 
anyone c can take on a kind of leadership leadership role because it, it is about motivating a team and and ultimately you're trying to you're trying to work towards something that is bigger than yourself it's not about you um, it's about whatever cause or aim you have so yeah it's never it's never about one person but in the days to come the British and American people will for their own safety and for the good of all walk together in majesty in justice and in peace but among all the leaders we met one great, even Churchillian, skill of leadership is unchanged, delivering a strong and simple message when faced with uncertainty and complexity. Rapidly altering markets have focused Robert Marshall on changing his staff's mindset. So right now I'm undergoing a major restructure of the company and that involves taking a lot of people with you on a journey for which I don't yet have all of the answers. I think that my job is to make sure that I understand what's on their minds and then uh, really assimilating all of that information to try to get a clarity and a rather simplified uh, version of the way forward that people can follow. We spoke to a mixture of men and women and all agreed that the rise of female leaders is changing the nature of leadership. I would like to think that as leadership evolves we will see more women and more female leaders. Um, it breaks my heart when people like Kim Kardashian get all the airtime, and then there are people, you know, incredibly inspiring women like Malala, um, Hillary Clinton, Sheryl Sandberg, all these people who are such fantastic role models because they're all very, you know, passionate about things. They're all very intelligent women. One of the ways in which leadership may be changing is the fact that there are more women coming up, more women being leaders. And I think as a woman coming up through the ranks, you often find that tactics that a man could do will backfire on you, um, that people dislike you and don't regard you as competent if you do the same things as a man might. So if you start getting very forceful, the woman is always accused of being aggressive, whereas the man might be said to be assertive. So I think there is a gender angle in this which needs to be understood. And of course, it's, it's women who dislike the women being forceful. It's not just the men. And so I don't know what the solution is, but I think as the dialogue continues about leadership and how gender may play into it, people will perhaps be a bit more realistic about this. It's clear that some fundamental things about leadership never change, integrity, for example. But what struck me today is that leadership over the past 10 years has shifted from being about powers invested in an individual with a title to being more about influence over groups and networks. Added to that, the rise of more women to positions of leadership, the increased use of technology and social media, and the sheer speed of change mean that it's hard to imagine that over the next 10 years the transformation won't be even more dramatic. Andrew Hill, Financial Times, Cambridge.